We'll do, we'll do it over and over again. Now listen, I have 12 points, and it's tw 10 after two. If we do 10 minutes on each point, 10 times two, 12, 120, that's two hours. Well, we won't do that. There are 12 points. This one doesn't have any paragraph markings in it, and it, usually uh, Proverbs doesn't, but they do at some places. But anyway, we're going to preach on, if, if we were uh, to preach, if, if we were to just read a few of these, a soft answer turneth away, uh, one word, give me one word. A soft, or no, give, you give me two words. The first word in Spanish is la, I think. A soft answer turneth away wrath, but grievous words stir up anger. The tongue of the wise is with knowledge of right, but the mouth of fools pourth out foolishness. The eyes of the Lord are in every place, beholding the evil and the good. A wholesome tongue is that now does anybody know what we're going to preach on? The la tongue. Is la the Yeah. Yeah. La. What's tongue in Spanish? Tongue. Tongue? Tongue? Tongue. Lengua. La legua? La lengua. Lengua? Mm -hmm. La lengua. We're preaching on the tongue. All right? The tongue. <clears throat> uh, we have uh, 12 points. And the tongue is a, a, a vicious thing, isn't it? Uh, it was Brother Nass said, oh, I, he wanted me to do a whole series on the tongue. And he brought up uh, James chapter what? James chapter, what does it talk about? It's a fire, and it sets the whole world on fire, and it's worse than that. No. James chapter, who said it? Three, James three. He, I never did do that. Uh, but that would have been a good suggestion, what he had said. But I never did a series on it. Uh, but let's do a bombardment tonight. I do have 12 points. We'll begin here at verse 1. Father, that you just would bless the sermon uh, this afternoon, Father, and that it would take root in our hearts, and we would practice this now in Christ's name. Amen. The thing is, is that we have to practice these things. It says here, a soft answer turns away wrath, but grievous words stir, stir up strength. Now, Proverbs runs this way. It gives a positive and then the counter, the positive and the negative, the positive and the negative. It does that a lot. Now, we're not doing the negative side, all right, because uh, we're angry enough. The idea is to undo the anger. So I, I, I guess my first point here is a soft tongue. A soft tongue. And uh, so, sometimes we have what we call, instead of a soft tongue, we have a sharp tongue. And then we have this, uh, what we call a comeback, and we have things, and, and it lashes out, and it's like a whip. And it does more damage than it does good. But if we give a soft answer to grievous words, it turn, it, what does it say, turneth away wrath? It, it, uh, it, it turneth away wrath. So when, when you hear uh, wrathful words or angry words, uh, you should give a, 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 soft, a soft answer, so a soft tongue. Now, what does it, it say? Now, I do have, I have verses. Uh, I decided to put verses down for all of it. Proverbs, we don't have to go there. Proverbs 25, uh, verse uh, 11. Uh, a, soft, uh, a soft answer, or the soft tongue, it what? Breaketh. Say it out loud, missus. Breaketh the bone. All right. The wife said it. Are you listening? My intention is to break every bone in your body. That's my intention. My intention is to break every bone in your body. Would, would, would it be something if we all had that intention? I'm going to break every bone in your body with a soft tongue, right? But in fact, we're, we're, we, are, we are close to Proverbs 25, verse 15. Uh, 25, 15, but long from here. A soft tongue breaketh the bone. The soft tongue breaketh the bone. Now, my wife never, never 
cooks anything bad. Never. Only rare, it's very rare. If, if, when, does she, when does she cook bad is when she changes the rut. <clears throat> How did you guess, sister? When you change the recipe, there's always complaints. But she does like to venture out in, in, uh, and do uh, new recipes, you know? And uh, the other day, all the pancakes were, how did you burn them? Why, why did they burn? Yeah, they weren't burnt. Why was that? Well, I ate them anyway. They were made out of blueberries. They were burnt, and I, I ate it anyway. You know, the burn, the, you know, feel the burn, as they said about burning. <laughs> Seasoning. But, uh, even Benton, he really didn't complain. When he walked into the kitchen with his plate of burnt pancakes, he, I, I will co confess for him, you know what he did? He's looking at me, the wife was behind he went like this. <laughs> he did that. <laughs> ben did do that, he went nah, like that. But uh, did you eat them or not? I, I, oh, he ate them. He ate them and there was very little complaint. But uh, would, wouldn't it be a great thing here if we bow, it, it's wrong to take a bow, but it'd be good to take some good bows here is that you would just get a, a nice soft answer all the time and break the bones in whoever it is, break every bone in their body. Uh, it, it's a miracle. <laughs> it, 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 it's a miracle. It, it softens them up till they become just a bowl full of jelly, I guess. And, uh, but if we were to do that, there would be a transformation in our homes. Just a transformation in our homes. Amen? So uh, I do have that intention. If you're anywhere associated with me, I intend to break every bone in your body with a soft answer. Killing me softly? Killing me softly with your tongue. <laughs> Killing me softly. <laughs> yes, thank you. It, it's a soft, slow death, you know. And what's wrong with that? Right? We need to do that. We need to do that. A soft tongue. Uh, whether it be your wife, a friend, an associate, at all times, every day, nonstop. Nonstop. Get ready, uh, girl. You're going to be, you're going to be one busted up. You're going to need the emergency ward. <laughs> You'll be in, I, I guess if every bone was in, broken in your body, you'd be in what? You'd be in traction. <laughs> you'd be in traction. A soft tongue. Okay, verse 2. The tongue of the wise useth, or, useth knowledge aright. So a wise tongue. Uh, it, it, now, my first that I picked, yeah, I just went to the concordance and I looked up the word wise. There was a wise woman that went to the edge of the, the tower. A wise, we got your buttons in the wrong place. <laughs> well, you know, sometimes you get your, your shirt buttoned incorrectly. <laughs> hey, hey, we ought to just do that just for fun. Just button it up backwards. You know? <laughs> oh, inside, I was inside out the other day. Yeah. Anyway, a wise tongue. Remember the woman that came to the edge of the edge of town, and 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 to the edge of the tower, and who was trying to bust the uh, city down? Anybody remember uh, who was the death angel? You don't want to meet up with. What was David's uh, general's name? No, no, not no. That was uh, uh, Rehoboam's. Joab. Joab. Uh, yeah, Abner was. He was a man that was just, and, uh, but at, uh, it was um, not Abner. It was Joab. And though there was a wise woman in this, and, and she had, hey, you know, it, it could be a man, it could be a woman, it could be a child. But she was, well, you know, why, you know, and she said, uh, it's a, a, here, I'm a daughter of Israel. And you're pounding down, isn't that what she said, the daughter of Israel? And you're pounding down the, the city walls here, and you're, you're, you intend to slaughter everybody here in the city. You know, that's what she's in, getting across the joy. I mean, so what, why are you out here? She said, I'm after, I can't remember the guy, not Cicera, it wasn't that fella, it was the one that, uh, when they were after, and Joab killed the cousin. What was the name of the other one? He made general. 
Ah, uh, not uh, Abner. It was uh, uh, a, a Mesa. A Mesa. Remember? It was a Mesa. And, and, and Joab stabbed him under the fifth rib. And Joab went to get this guy that rebelled against David. And, and she said, his head is over the, <laughs> the city wall tonight. And so they had, a, uh, they had a town hall meeting. They found him and, and lopped off his head and threw it over. Oh, a wise, a wise tongue. A lot can be accomplished with the tongue. It spared a whole city, that, that woman and her wisdom. Now, I'm not saying we want anybody's head to go over the, the, the wall tonight, you know, and chop somebody's head off, but, uh, but the tongue can save a lot of grief for people that are down, down the road here. Just one word of wisdom. Uh, it could be, uh, now I can't think of anything off the top of my head. It, 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 it could come to me, and that is, uh, oh, it was uh, Marianne Mihalicek. Uh, we were, uh, I've told the story here. Doc, Doc was here, uh, Jeff August was here, myself. We were having a meeting with the men. It's, it was especially Jeff, Doc, and myself. We were reviewing the old building here, the uh, house and this building. We were going to tie it together. And we were going to make passageways between the two buildings in a large auditorium. And we, we were going to take this, this dead horse and connect it to an elephant. And what would that have looked like? What, what, what did you say? A mess. <laughs> it would have been a mess. Now, the guys probably would have been all right with it. But who would not have been all right with it? The women would have been. Uh, the kids probably would have thought it was cool. But the women would have been really, really upset. And what did Mary Ann say? And they were, her husband was in the, now she, he wasn't here, but her husband was in the construction business. They did this for a living. She said, it, we, we've always found it best to build, and what was the word? New. We've always found it best to build new. And we looked at each other. And you know what? We, we came to immediate conclusion. That woman's smarter than us. That woman was smarter than us. So what was the decision? Tear it down. Tear it down. So we tore it down. I remember it was a, there was a, a girl. Uh, her car broke out down in front of Richmond Road there. Uh, uh, 5836 Richmond Road. There was a car broke down. And uh, myself, a friend, and there was three guys of us. We popped the, it was a girl. You know, it, it, when, when a girl's car breaks down, all the guys were more than willing to run to her aid. We ran to her aid. We flipped the lid. We were all looking under there. We're going to troubleshoot this thing. And now what's wrong? What's wrong? And we were trying to figure it out. Finally, after about 15 minutes, she picked up the, the, the uh, uh, now you've got to remember, this is old, uh, Old cars, you know, it was from the mid '60s. The the uh, from the uh, coil mm -hmm. to the distributor kit that it, it popped off. Mm -hmm. the, the one one she said, could it be the, uh, could it be this wire here? And we all looked at each other. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. Could be. <laughs> it could be. <laughs> yeah, it, it it could be. And so we put it back here, and then she started up and on her way. <laughs> Yeah, it could be. Yeah, so a wise tongue, you know, it's, it's, it doesn't mean it, it has to be smart or intelligent, but wisdom, a wise tongue, can really avoid a lot of problems down the road. A wise tongue. Verse 4. A wholesome tongue is a tree of life. So this tongue that is uh, producing, uh, a, a tongue that actually produces a fruit here. A tree of life. A tree that is growing. And, and sometimes the wholesome words, it takes time to grow this tree. It doesn't, it's not jacking the beanstalk. You know, when he threw the beans out. Oh, who threw the beans out, by the way? The mother. The mother threw, yeah, no, she wasn't wise. She threw, oh no, Jack would have ate them. Oh no, no, Jack knew they were magic. Mm -hmm. I forget. Uh, and, and the mother, uh, she throws them out the window. And, and how long did it take for the beanstalk to grow? Two pages. 
overnight. It was just a, f a few hours. It was grown overnight. But see, this is a tree of life. It, does it take a long time for a tree to grow? It takes a long time. But there's life there. It's getting larger. And it's, it's producing life and fruit. Uh, amen. In uh, 1 Timothy uh, verse uh, chapter 6, verses 1 through 5, what does it call the words of Jesus? Anybody know? And I did bring it up, and I think I preached on it once. It, 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 they're called wholesome words, the wholesome words of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And so there are words that can be used that are not chopping off roots, but are fertilizing the roots and, and making the, ma ma getting all the, you know, the right ingredients and the right uh, Amounts of rain and amount of sunshine, wholesome words, you know. So we're going to t we're we're going to use words. When I say we, 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 us, we are going to use words that are going to break every bone in your body. And wise words that will uh, 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 will uh, will avoid disaster down the road, and wholesome words that will be edifying. In building in a person's life and not destructive. Wholesome words. Uh, Proverbs 5, uh, verse 5 here. A fool despises his father instruction, but he that regardeth reproof is prudent. A reproving tongue. Uh, my first memory verse in the Bible. A reproof entereth more into a wise man than a hundred stripes into a fool. That's Proverbs 17.10. A reproof enters more into a wise man than a hundred stripes into a fool. Now, it just so happened that was the memory verse on a Wednesday night at Bible Believers, the first night I went. And I decided, you know what? I never heard of memorizing the Bible. Have you ever heard of memorizing the Bible? I've never heard of it. There's always a first time to hear of something. So I decided, you know, if everybody else was memorizing it, they will memorize it too. So I started memorizing some of these. But a reproving tongue... A reproving tongue is not so much is it's a uh, it's a scolding, but it, a reproving tongue I would have to say is uh, more of placed from a father to a son to reprove. Uh, now we could say correction. That's coming up here if we even get that far. A reproving tongue to reprove, rebuke is really harsh, but uh, kind of like a correction. If a person is wise and they hear a reproof, which is a mild scolding. And the person that's receiving it is wise. What would the wise person do but to change his ways and make a correction in his life? Uh, my, did, my, my dad did do that with my 32, uh, I think it was a 32 coupe I had. He, 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 he finally had enough. And he, he screamed and yelled at me. His teeth didn't come out of his mouth. They, he, normally his teeth would fly out of his mouth. His false teeth would just, he'd actually have to catch them. And his teeth didn't come out, but he was he, very upset. At that moment, that moment, I stopped what I was doing, and I sold the car. I stopped it, and it went up for sale. That, it was like that moment, that moment. <clears throat> there does come a time when you must listen. Are you doing something that's wrong? Now, it starts with a, with a mild scolding. But if a person continues down that path, reproving, then has to get to <clears throat> rebuking. Maybe my father was past reproving. I think it was at the time. That was at the point of rebuking. And then I, and I put the brakes on. The brakes did go on. A reproving time. Uh, verse 7, the lips of the wise disperse knowledge, but the heart of the foolish doeth not so. Disperse knowledge. When I think of knowledge, I think of something that is head knowledge or like teaching, a teaching, a teaching tongue. Um, uh, but grown grace and the knowledge of our Lord and the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. In Psalm 94, that's 2 Peter 3.18, in Psalm 94, verse 12, in verse 12, it says, Blessed is the man who thou chastenest, O Lord, and teachest him out of thy law. A teaching, you know, anything a person ever needs in life can be found in the Bible. 
to teach a person the ways of life. Now, it doesn't, it's not going to teach you calculus. It's not necessarily going to teach you the, the capital of all the states of the United States. I'm not really talking about that kind of teaching, but we're talking about life, life lesson. I didn't know you could play. Oh, that's Lil's. Oh, she's not present. Uh -uh. Okay, but a teaching tongue. And what better, what better way to learn than out of the Word of God? Listen, if you're not in the Word of God, if you're not in the Word of God, you will not learn the way of God. If you're not in the Word of God, you're not going to learn the way of God. And the only way you're going to learn the way of God is to be in His Word so you can learn His teaching. Right? You need to be in there. Even if it's a chapter a day or a little bit a day, something, you need, to, you need to read that. If you haven't been reading, well then double up. Get some time alone. Make sure you're awake. If you want to fall asleep, that's okay. Start reading the Bible and then about a, a chapter or two later you fell asleep, well go ahead and sleep it off. Then wake up and once you're finally good and awake, then read five or ten chapters. Amen? But cut yourself the slack at the, at the time in which to learn that. And we'll learn the teachings and the ways of God. Amen. Look at verse 8. The sacrifice. What's the sacrifice of our lips, brothers and sisters? Uh, really close. Uh, extra close. Yeah, the, the, uh, the sacrifice of our lips. I, I, maybe I'm wrong. But it's prayer. But maybe I'm wrong. We, we are going to look it up. We're going to look it up and we'll, we'll see. Uh, it, it does say that, though. Yeah, the praise. I think. Well, we're going to go there. Uh, to the, but the prayer of the upright is his delight. You want to please God and delight him? Pray. Pray. The, the prayer, a praying tongue. I, uh, I, uh, I, I pray for uh, my 13th grandchild. Do you have any names picked out yet? No. Oh, you are listening? They answered. That's the 13th grandchild. I, I, I've been praying for the 13th grandchild. I pray for my 12th grandchild. All right, that Molly said. Is there a name picked out? No name. Oh, yeah, she's having a boy. Is she secret? Because she got foiled on the first or the second. Uh, so I pray for the 13th. Yeah, I'm praying for Amy. I, I pray for the 12th. And I'm, pray, I'm praying for my 11. So Esther has prayers all the time. All the time. I pray for the landscapers. I pray for the presidices. That they don't cut their foot off with their chainsaw, their dumb chainsaws, you know. I, I pray for that. That they don't uh, have an injury. And, uh, and this is dangerous work, folks. I and mean, you ought to pray about these things throughout throughout the day. I pray for that, that Zachary. Not that Z-man, but the other baby. You know, and uh, Z Zachary is, he asked me today, are we going to be quizzed today? I said, no, on Wednesday. He's already preparing for this quiz. But I, I pray for you. I pray for you. It meant a praying tongue. Uh, it, and, and that thing about the sacrifice, where would you go, sister? Hebrews chapter 13, verse 15, by him, therefore, yeah, you're right, you're right, it was praise and thanksgiving. By him, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually, that is, the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. But isn't giving thanks prayer? Yeah, okay, so hey, I got to make myself right. Yeah. The, a praying tongue, we need to be praying. And if you're having problems, then pray about it. Pray about it. All right? Pray about that soft tongue. Oh, Lord, I used that soft tongue, and, uh, and their bones aren't broken. Well, pray about it. And Lord, break every bone. And I intend to do that. Every bone in your body. I'll say it over ten times. Every bone in your body with a, with a soft tongue, a praying tongue. Proverbs 7, uh, no, I'm sorry, uh, verse 10. Correction is grievous unto him that forsaketh the way. He that reproveth shall die. 
So one who is corrected is he who ends up in its Proverbs 7, verse 22. Where would they put the town fool who, who is correct? They put him where? In the center of town, in the what? Starts with, a, in the, with an S. They put him in the stocks. And see, you've read that enough in Proverbs to know that it is the stocks. Now, if you said that amongst a, a group of people that were not in the Bible ever, and, you know, have been around life long enough and seen enough Hollywood or studied medieval ages and, and stuff, you could say where the town fool ended ended up in the center of town. They ended up in, somebody would say the stocks, they would say it, but if you've read the Bible, you know that. And then, so you don't want to have a correcting tongue on you, but you want to be the one that's dishing it out if it's needed. But there are times that people need correction, just flat out correction. Why, do, why is it that you don't correct them when they need correcting? Oh, oh, you think it could be money? I, I say you don't have the courage to do it. You hold back, you hold back, and you're kind of fearful to do it. There, there are times we just need to get the guts and correct them. Get the guts and do it, and, and correct the person. The correcting, the correcting tongue. Uh, verse 14, the heart of him that hath understanding. Now see, these are going from positive tongues to now to some uh, uh, more um, negative type tongues. The heart of him that hath understanding seeketh knowledge, but the mouth of fools feedeth on foolishness. The, a foolish tongue. The fool has said in his heart, what? Say that in Allah. There is no God. Folks, we know people who are at that point. We know people that are at that point. Now, I don't know what it's going to take to turn that around, but we know people that are at that point. The fool has said in his heart, the foolish tongue, that there is no God. Oh, they could be worldly wise, but man, the end of that, man, it, it can only be the, the, the ways of death. A foolish tongue, it gets to the point, so far, so foolish, they say there is no God. Foolish tongue. Verse twenty, uh, verse twenty-two. Skip over. Without counsel, purposes are disappointed, but the multitude of counselors they are established. A counseling tongue. There's wisdom. Proverbs eleven, verse fourteen. In in how many counselors starts with an M? Not many, but close. A multitude of counselors. A multitude of counselors. If you go far enough, you have your a presupposed answer. It usually, this is how my father used to do it. Dad, should I buy the car? What was his answer? Do you want my advice or do you want my approval? And so a lot of times when we ask for counsel, we're, we're not looking for advice. We're looking for approval. Isn't that true? You just, you, you already have your presuppose of what you want to do, and then you go about looking for somebody to give you the nod. But if we go around in the multitude of counselors and, and you, you find out, and if they're going to be truthful with you, the counseling will point out all the, and that, that kind of goes in with the, uh, the one with the, a wise tongue. Is it, it goes like M Mrs. Mahalachek. She headed us off. At, if we went ahead with that, we would have had a discombobulated mess and a waste of money. And that counseling tongue of hers really, really uh, aborted a big problem that we would have had. A counseling tongue. Verse 23. A man hath joy by the answer of his mouth, and a word spoken in due season. How good is it? A seasonable tongue. Whatever the seasons are in your life, there is a word in which, if a person is graduating, graduating from, uh, from college, what do you say to them? Can, and I, I, did re I did read that. Well, I was reading that off uh, to uh, Corey this morning, reading the plaque. I, I read the word congratulations to see if it was what? Spelled right. It's spelled with a T or a D. 
T. It's spelled with a T. How would you like to etch about 200 of those in bronze, in bronze, with a D? Now, we didn't make the mistake, but the art man over the other place made the boo-boo. Yeah, he, he, they did all that, uh, it was either naval bronze or spring, it was the real deal. It's not the new junk they, they do today. It was spring phosphorus or naval bronze. All those plaques, I think they went to University Hospital. They were all wrong. You know where they all ended up? In a scrap bin. <laughs> well, they ended up in the smelter. But they all had to be scrapped out. Uh, why did I say that? Well, see, uh, if a person is graduating, what do you say to them? Congratulations. Right? Job well done. Even if they graduated from, you know, they, I don't remember a graduating class in kindergarten. Mm -hmm. I don't think we ever had that. But if kids, kids today, they get a, a reward for everything. But, I mean, if they showed up for class, they get a reward. For, uh, uh, Anthony would get it if he showed up for a month straight. Man, the plaque is there. Yeah, for a month. I showed up for four years straight. Four years, didn't miss. Got my little pin. I always wonder what happened to that little pin. Got that little pin for perfect attendance. You know, I never, I don't know what happened. But you, can, you encourage people, right? You, a, a word fitly spoken, right? A word fitly spoken, and, and that's our, our companion verse, uh, is Proverbs 25, 11. A word fitly spoken is, is like, what do you eat? Apples of what? In. Of. Pictures of silver. Apples of gold framed there in pictures of silver. Fitly spoken. Right? And not, and not as a downer. Even though they could be downers. Sometimes they need to be spoken. But let, let, let's first break the bone in, in somebody else's body. Right? Let's first do that before we go to the name. Right, a seasonable tongue. All right, verse 26. We only got two more. Two more. The thoughts of the wicked are an abomination to the Lord, but the words of the pure are pleasant words. Pleasant words. Not just words that are filling up space, but we look forward to hearing that person's voice. You hear a voice, you know, when you hear a voice, you already have some kind of a, a positive reaction or you're going to have a negative reaction, right? If that person is, has got pleasant words or just one can... Oh, there she goes. Esther's already telling, telling me off, right? It's good to hear. I, I always love hearing a baby cry. Never bothered me at all. It, it has never bothered me. Isn't it a shame it bothers some guy to the, the point that the baby ends up in the hospital? That's terrible. But babies crying never, never, ever bothered me. Even if they were a brat, it never bothered me. It was it my kid? I said, oh, well, it's a brat, and mother needs to be encouraged to smack it. But if it was one of my kids, we just stopped it all. Hey, you want to survive? Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> A pleasant time when the, the voice, when you hear a certain voice, you're pleasantly, you're, you're boy, it's so and so here, and it's like like a pleasant breeze. You're going to hear encouraging words and and so on. We need that. We need to have good conversation like that. Where you're alone with somebody, what's the conversation like? What is it like? Pleasant. And last of all, oh, uh, the words, uh, the, the, the complimentary, it's uh, verse 24 of chapter 16. Pleasant words are as in honeycomb, as a honeycomb, right? And our last one, verse 28, the heart of the righteous studieth to answer, but the mouth of the wicked poureth out evil things. Listen, almost everyone we had was positive. There were very few that are negative. But there is the evil tongue. In verse 30 of chapter 16, he shut his eyes to the device, forward things, moving his lips, he bringeth evil to pass. Moving his lips, he bringeth evil to pass. An evil tongue is just one destructive tongue. A destructive tongue. 
tearing down the uh, uh, morals and tearing down the, uh, the, the very will of people so that they're just devastated. Right, that you have a, a, for the old building to come down, right, that they send in the demolition crew. But I'll tell you, some people, that's all they do is demolition. Demolition, destruction, with their tongue. With their tongue. I hope, I hope we made headway. Headway in this. So if you were to go over this, this is a big list. You had to say, well, we've got to memorize this and go over there. Now let's practice, let's practice this. Thing. You know what? Why don't you just pick one and, and just practice it? About the soft answer. How does it begin? A soft answer turns away wrath, but grievous words stir up anger. I mean, why don't we just say sweet things to each other? And practice that. And the soft tongue breaketh the what? And I intend to break every bone in your body. I mean that. I mean that. Shake hands before leaving.